So today we're making an outdoor sofa all out of two by sixes, only using a handful of power tools. And we're really showcasing the value and efficiency of the Craig Jig 720 Pro. I cut the two by sixes to length using my circular saw guided by my Craig portable cross cut. There's only three different lengths of board, so not that hard to remember. I really like the Craig 720 Pro. It's a step up from the basic pocket hole jig. I can connect my shop vac to it so that the dust doesn't build up. It also lets me drill two holes at a time and clamps the board securely in place. After cutting and pocket holing the pieces, I gave them all a light sanding with 150 grit paper on my orbital sander. Now I can start panelizing the leg supports. I'm gonna assemble this upside down. So I just marked out where I want the seat boards to go so that I make sure I drill my pocket holes in approximately the right location. This design is pretty flexible. And if you want a more loungy sofa, you can just take a lower angle on these back supports. I'm going somewhere in between upright and loungy, and I drilled in four pocket holes to attach these back support pieces to those support panels that are going underneath the sofa. I drew lines on these eight foot long two by sixes so that I could assemble it upside down and know where to line up these lower support panels. Once again, the portable crosscut comes in handy for drawing perpendicular lines. Now I can just screw in these panels, use a quarter inch wide ruler to create spacing and attach all of the seat boards. The cushions that I'm using are two feet wide, so I have six feet of seating with a foot of side table on either side. A spring clamp is a great way to hold the back supports in place while I drive in the pocket screws. I'm just using two and a half inch long coated deck screws for this project. Now you don't have to notch this out, you could just screw it the same way you did the other boards, but I thought it'd be a little bit nicer to keep the spacing even. So I aligned the backboard, drew in a notch, and then cut it out with my jigsaw. Now this is pretty DIY level woodworking, and I just used my orbital sander with 60 grit to bevel the backside of the notch just so I could get the spacing more consistent. I screwed in the backboard, flipped it over, and was ready to add in the backrest. Now I could have panelized these with pocket screws and that certainly would be a fine way to do it, but I knew the whole thing was gonna be plenty strong. What I like about this design is its efficiency. The backrest isn't just something to lean against, it's actually strengthening the entire structure and keeps me from having to do a support underneath the sofa. going for a rustic sort of woodsy feel. So I just sealed it all with a penetrating oil that has a little bit of UV protection. This is a pretty standard size for outdoor cushions. You can get them at most sort of big box retailers. If you want a lot of color options, go in the spring right before summer. That's when they start really getting inventory of outdoor cushions. If you want value, go in the fall, which is what I did. And I got these cushions for about half off, but with fewer options. What I really like about this sofa is the flexibility of the design. We could extend this for and make it a sofa for six people if we wanted to. We'd probably just want to add in a middle support the same way we did the two side panels, but you could go really long and do it almost like kind of like outdoor theater seating. And it's such an easy project. It's all right angle cuts, super simple. Everything's connected with a pocket hole jig and uh, you could probably, even if you didn't have a jigsaw, get away with cutting those slots with a circular saw. So let me know what you think in the comment section below and thanks for watching.